Standard Chartered, based in the UK, says it will consider whether the bank can restart correspondent banking relationships with Sudan following the proposed lifting of U.S. sanctions. Anurag Bajaj, who oversees the British-based lender's correspondent banking business, where it provides services for other banks, says the, ba the lender was viewing the implications of last month's move by the outgoing Obama's administration to unfreeze assets and remove financial sanctions in return for his helping in fighting Islamic State and other militant groups. The sanctions relief will come in six months if Sudan takes further steps to improve its human rights record and makes progress resolving its military conflicts. Okay, Nigeria's military Ministry of Petroleum Resources has released a podcast featuring the Deputy Minister of State, Dr. Ibe Kachiku, highlighting the oil sector militancy challenges and the 20-point agenda that he says will provide, quote, a roadmap to closure. The video was released on Tuesday detailing Nigeria's road to a deadly and economically crippling militancy in the oil-rich region. This is Dr. Kachiku's introduction to his ministry's 20-point roadmap closure. One of the key critical challenges this country has is the militancy that has plagued the Niger Delta environment and the stop oil operations almost on an unending basis. And it is it's something that is defeated every, every regime, one regime after another. It's continued, it's consistent, we've not been able to find final solutions. That's why all the efforts that have been thrown at it. Let, let's start with a few statistics. At the highest point of this last year, uh, we were producing 1.2 million barrels, which means we were losing literally a million barrels of oil per day. At that time also, uh, we were basically losing an average, if you look at 2016, of over, uh, historically over uh, 50 to uh, 100 billion uh, dollars of unearned income as a result of this disruption. Uh, jobs were out, uh, pipelines were strewn all over the place, uh, refineries couldn't work to capacity, we couldn't meet our contractual international obligations, and the economy basically suffered. Now when you compare that, when you uh, add that side by side with the fact that oil price also declined by over 60% over the last one and a half years, you see the massive problem that His Excellency uh, President Muhammad Buhari has faced and has had to deal with over this time period. It is a massive problem. But different from even the government of uh, uh, His Excellency President Buhari, this is a problem that has consistently been there even before the uh, government of President Obasanjo. And it, is, it went on into other governments, Yaradwa, uh, Jonathan, everybody. It is a problem that seems to be intractable, seems to be never ending, and seems to never have a solution in sight. So it is a, a difficult undertaking to try to embark on trying to resolve it once and for all. But we are very bullish about this. The Deputy Minister of Petroleum Resources says his bullet, so he released that podcast you can find uh, on the website. But that podcast was released on the day the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibaja, was in Patakot River State to talk to the leaders and uh, other stakeholders in the Niger Delta on how to bring peace. He also bring promises of a renewal of economic and, of course, environmental cleansing of the, Niger, of the Niger Delta region. So let's get a bit of a sense of this. Let's put it into some context. The Kachikus podcast and the acting president, Oshibajo's Niger Delta Peace and Promises Roadshow. Let's get uh, Adimo Kwesa, who is a research analyst at Financial Derivatives Company here in Lagos, to talk to us about this. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming through on the program. Uh, Adam, uh, what do you make of the acting president of Shibajo's peace and promises meetings with the Niger Deltas and other interest groups? Well, I think it's a positive development. This is the second round of dialogue in as many months. I think it underscores the, how much finding a permanent end to rebel activity in, in the Niger Delta region is a priority for the current administration. I'm happy with the fact that the vice president announced that he was able to that the government was able to secure one billion dollars from Shell to develop the region and improve social services. So it makes it clear that it's not all talk, but at least there's some action. At least they're making consensus consensus efforts to improve the region and develop the region. So it's a positive development. Uh, if it, the, are you surprised that the Minister of Petroleum Resources also uh, released a podcast saying, look, we have our 20-point agenda, uh, this was just released today, that will help end the militancy in the Niger Delta, ruling back this uh, major problem for the country, economic underbelly, 
uh, beyond one, two, three, four administration? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised considering that our production is still way below our target. It's at 1.6, which is about 30%. And considering if you take into context that Nigeria, yes, we issued, we entered the European market last week, or we were able to issue 1 billion, but that's just a drop of water, in my opinion. We still need to go back and get at least three times that amount. And if with active dialogue with this Niger Delta region, with the government making efforts to dialogue with these guys, then I think it improves our revenue generation capacity and multilateral lenders will be more willing to give us financing and it will also restore investor confidence in, this eco in the economy. So I think this, what the NNPC is doing, what the VP is doing is very much needed. Uh, do, 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 uh, at the end of it all, it's all about investments, isn't it? We need critical money coming to that region, onshore, offshore businesses, upstream, downstream sector, isn't it? Yes, indeed. And the public sector cannot do it alone. The government cannot do it alone. We need IOCs to make, to chip in and also develop social services, improve social services and make the region vibrant, a vibrant economic region again. Okay, Odim, Adim, thank you very much for uh, waiting on this conversation uh, today. We thank you very much for uh, putting that in, into what you research analysts think, uh, what the, uh, pro, the acting president, Professor Yemi Shibajo, is doing on his second leg of uh, peace and promises meetings with the stakeholders in the Niger Delta. Thank you for your time today from Financial Derivatives Company.